Sure. The Domics are buying carrots. I have never been more entertained. I guess uh, the digestives. Bosh. Boom. Done. How to know your YouTube channel has totally jumped the shark, even with your own audience, when you are shooting footage of your retired wife with an inheritance wandering around a grocery store, and the two of you are hunting for digestives. What the heck kind of a weird move was that? Our Ken is coming in with the camera too fast, and Carol didn't know what to do. Hey, let's play that a few times and laugh at it. All right, we're gonna unpack all this stuff. Whoa, what the heck was that? It was a twirl and a thumbs up, all in one motion. I guess Ken thinks he's doing something cool. Let's uh, give him the benefit of the doubt and uh, let's uh, play it a few times. Pack all this stuff, 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 pack all this stuff. Mmm, it is not cool. It is just weird. Good morning. Good morning. How'd you sleep? 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 Good morning. Place and place and place and place and The sprinter van has been posterized and it is at a funny angle, taking up the entirety of the road. <laughs> it is Carol who is loaded. She wants to tour and she wants to tour right now. The zany guy who's looking for fast food and giving everything a go out and get it now, uh, this character here appears to be dead and gone. Because I don't know how he can come back after poisoning his food channel and the audience that he does have that's expecting more and more fast food and, and it's all like a senior citizen lifestyle channel now. Drink, 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 donate. E-beggar. Drink, boost, hound. Drink, 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 donate. E-beggar. Drink, boost, hound. Drink, 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 donate. E-beggar. Drink, uh, happy birthday, boost, hound. Hack, e-beggar. Uh, I'm gonna ride this uh, YouTube gravy train until the wheels fall off. Uh, donate, e-beggar. Donate, e-beggar. Donate, e-beggar. Gravy train. I'm not Muslim. Uh, I'm just a food channel that's running out of ideas. In the meantime, let's watch some TikTok. I'm a TikTok white Canadian. I'm a TikTok white. I'm a TikTok white Canadian. I'm a TikTok white. I'm not Muslim. Uh, I'm. Just a white Canadian white guy. Hitler flap. Thank you very much. White guy. Because I'm white. So the Japanese are horrible people. If I had a gun and you were right in front of me, I'd put the gun to your face. Ah. 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 Uh, I'm gonna ride this uh, YouTube gravy train until the wheels fall off. Uh, I think I've stalled. <laughs> <laughs> If I had a gun and you were right in front of me, I'd put the gun to your face. Bitch. Uh, I did the uncut raw videos. Whether we win or lose, we drink booze. A British, a British, a British penis. <laughs> I'm very uneducated. Is this your full-time job? Yes. This is a business. Topper's Pizza. This is a business. Topper's Pizza. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. That sucked like shit. That sucked huge fucking shit. Do you enjoy doing food reviews as much or are you bored? I'm bored. Tangy. Mmm. Tangy. Mmm. Tangy. 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 I'm insane. Double, a double. Hi, can I get a medium Pepsi, please? Sorry? Medium Pepsi. There's a sign. There's a sign. There's a sign here saying turtles. Oh. Oh. Yep. Yeah. Oh. This is my car. <laughs> We're gonna do it. Here we go. Ready? Oh no. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. It's totally messy, but yeah. the idea is you keep it in the. Wrapper. I know, I know. I want okay, people to okay, see okay. it. Yeah. But he wanted to eat this in the car. So I think we could have. No. Mm. I would have rocked my car. Mm. Ah! I'm not Muslim. Uh, I'm just a white Canadian Hitler flap. See what I mean? Hitler flap. Thank you very much. Because I'm white. The Chinese are horrible, so the Japanese are horrible people. Fuck. Fuck. Shit. Beautiful, 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 beautiful looking lunch. You are good at describing food. You really gotta stop that. You really need to stop that. How, how else to fix this? You really gotta stop that. You really need to stop that. <laughs> this is the dumpster that we, your mom and I found you in. Your real name was gonna be called Waste Management. <laughs> yeah, I made more fucking money than you ever did. So, um, that is it for his, uh, zany character. We have got here. The, the channel is, is gone and turned into this boring retiree channel. He looks angry as hell! What the heck is the matter with Ken? Now, if you're a child, don't fucking watch this. What are we, not even one second in? A second and a half? And already we got problems. Check the Ken Domic music service. It's like really jaunty and, and, and peppy and country and dopey. Yeah, coming from a guy who goes to do these errands with a Volkswagen Tijuan and he has a Volkswagen ass sitting beside it in the driveway. He just bought a Mercedes brand Sprinter van. And he's planning to get a, a tricked out Mercedes Benz Sprinter van with uh, the cost like around $140,000. Yeah, it really feels just like, like some simple country folk. Yeah. Some carrots. Is that okay? Sure. The Domics are buying carrots. I have never been more entertained. We could dip those too, right? Yeah. Oh, this is the dangerous area. That is only funny if Ken was sticking to a reasonable diet. We're not even expecting him to do a healthy, strict diet. Just reasonable. So if somebody with a reasonable diet walked by a bunch of tarts and cupcakes and donuts and, you know, all, you know, all the dough, you know, topped with icing, then, from that reasonable sort of diet, then that person could say, uh oh, oh, these are dangerous. When we know that Ken indulges all the time. Like, how many times have we seen him eating donuts, 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 stuffed donuts, cakes, pastries galore, and, and uh, picking up stuff to take back to the shack in the Elf Village, uh, village. All kinds of gooey, sugary, doughy garbage. So, um,. And, and, and then he, he, he went to the dessert cafe late last month and indulged like a madman for day and night and eating the heaviest shit that you could get your hands on. So it's like, as, as if like he's going to say that, uh oh, dangerous. He doesn't even care. He eats this stuff all the time. So it is not funny for him to say that. Dangerous. That's a thin slice. Wonder White, one step above the house brand of white bread. And just because it says no artificial flavors or colors doesn't mean it isn't filled with all kinds of chemicals and other things you don't need, along with tons of added sugar. Uh, it has four grams of sugar for two slices. So you make a sandwich with Wonder Bread, you're getting more sugar than a lollipop. Like, they have so much money, why don't they get some good, dark, rye bread? I mean, why, why this stuff? 
But like I said, it's just, it's just one step above the, the house brand white in quality, which isn't saying much. It's still pretty darn cheap. And like, spend a few dollars and get some dark rye bread, get some real bread, get some, some bread that doesn't compete with a lollipop for the sugar uh, added to it. Yeah, big, thick bread. Right? A lot of thin ones. Happy birthday, Oreo. 110. Nice. More like, it does not matter and who cares. Like, JP and Julia would never shoot footage of that if they didn't have a good joke to go along with it. So for Ken, he just takes it for what it is. It's like Oreo. It's like, well, oh, hey, look at that. Nice. And then, like, I gotta describe it now because he cuts so quickly after he says, oh, well, birthday cake, and boom, he cuts. So I can't even do a freeze frame and talk about it. So then he's gonna drag the camera down and notice that there's birthday cake Oreos. It's like, so what? Congratulations. Happy birthday cake. Now we're looking for, I guess, uh, the digestives. Bosh. Boom. Done. How to know your YouTube channel has totally jumped the shark, even with your own audience, when you are shooting footage of your retired wife with an inheritance wandering around a grocery store, and the two of you are hunting for digestives. Done. Like, Ken thinks because he's running the camera, that means it's entertainment and he's got footage to put on the channel. That's just, just his own opinion for himself. And, and, you know, I, Carol has the inheritance. They are set for money. And they are going to spend it. And they're going to spend it Carol's way. She wants to tour. So they're going to tour. And I, he has, this is the footage he's going to bring along the way. They're, they're, they're getting some very safe cookies. And, uh, this, this would be weak even for Ken's vlog channel. You know? Uh, if this was almost going to be the thumbnail, and I figured, you know what, this would be too boring. You know, I got to do, the, the thumbnail has to be a little bit funnier than that. However, th this was, this, this, this image is really the heart of this, uh, reaction. Uh, the, 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 the you know, even talking about it is, is so boring. Uh, oh, by the way, this is the moment where we're going to insert the graphic, of course. It is the Senior Living Channel with your host, Ken Domic. And... What more is there to say? Let's just keep the cringe coming from Ken and company as he ruins his main channel. With the chocolate on. There we go. These are the best ones. Funny that of the digestives, they are going to get the family digestive. And both of Ken's kids, who are of course adults, refuse to be on his channel. <laughs> hey, he should have just got the Oreos. <laughs> You could actually upgrade and go to these ones if you wanted to, but there's more chocolate on it. That's alright. Oh, and then you could do like mint truffle. But let's just get that one. Ken finally lowers his assault, and they decide to stay with the most boring digestive. Carol just found one of her favorite cookies. What is it? Salted caramel cookie uh, cookie chips. Found them. They plump when you cook them. Hey, Ken. Why not buy a condolence card for your broken dreams to become a big shot and mail it to yourself? Looks like we are all done. Yes, it does, Ken. The Ken and Carol team is a flop on your main channel. And it would even be a flop on your vlog channel. <laughs> Time to pay for this stuff. Okay. Two days ago, I had a huge snowstorm. We already know Ken's personality and his history of clickbaiting titles for his YouTube channels. And last year, when a tornado hit Barry, he ran a picture on his vlog channel of the devastation in Barry. And he said in his title, this is what it looked like from my house. And people were like, oh, Ken, are you safe? The tornado did not touch the elf village. So... Ken has a habit of lying about the weather, and the little story he's about to tell here, like, in southern Ontario, Canada, we do have extremes of heat and cold, uh, and we can have variations in the spring and, and, uh, in the autumn, and, uh, 
the winter gets very cold in the summer on some days with the humidity get very hot. Yeah, what he's about to tell you here is a complete lie. I'm 20 minutes away from the Elf Village here in Barrie. And he's trying to make it sound like we had minus 20 in an enormous snowstorm. And then the next day it's plus 5 and it's all gone. He's totally lying. And then yesterday, the, the area that we're in had to recover. And then today, it's like dry as a bone and gone. Such a crazy, crazy weather we have here in Canada. Where are we off to today? Ken already knows where they're going, and so does Carol. This is so fake. So he asks her, like, oh, where are we going today? This is using Carol as a device for exposition. And it is almost like some sort of children television program. Like, we're gonna do it today, and we're gonna do it today, and this is it, and like, uh, uh, what's that that we're having for breakfast? Ooh, ooh. And what's this that they, is this a, a, an orange or is this a lemon? <laughs> um, you could never find JP and Julia acting so silly on purpose for something like this. We are off to McGregor Point Provincial Park in Port Elgin. Go ahead and correct her on camera, Ken. And then leave it in the footage. In Port Elgin. Yes. So I've been we've been scouting this place out for a while now because I I was looking for places that you can do winter camping, and there's only so many places here in Ontario that do yurt camping, and a yurt is basically a kind of a permanent tent. No, it is a small plastic apartment. It has electricity, a gas stove. It's got everything. Like to call this camping is just silly on a base with a heater in it and uh, you're not allowed to cook in them but uh let's go over there check in and then we'll show you guys what a yurt is you ready right, and we've go. got all of our food all the stuff in the back my goodness i hope that is enough and that the domics don't starve to death for a lack of food we are full and uh, we're gonna have a good time can domic music service it's gonna play Bon Jovi again. Can I make music service? Gonna play Bon Jovi again. Shut down in a basic glory. Yeah, yeah. That's all I'm gonna sing. I don't wanna ruin the little monetization that I get. Do 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 do. Active bears. Uh oh, closed. Great footage. The Dominics are standing in front of a closed parks office trying to figure out what to do. So I guess we just go in. Sites available for one night only. Late arrivals. Oh, look. Here we are. Uh, wood fires available after hours at the host campsite. Cash only. So 33. All right. Find your own site. Here we go. That's the problem with uh, winter hours here. Winter camping? They did this at the tail end of March, and the roads are perfect. There is no snow on any of the trees, and there's just a tiny little bit of snow left on the vegetation on the ground. Winter camping, yeah, right. At uh, some of these locations. There you go, Birch Boulevard. Yeah, 43 to 92. Let's go around through this. Look, we're going through our campsite because uh, that's crazy over there. There's a no, that's the washrooms right there. And we are looking for yurts 74, 59. Oh, there's a cabin. Yeah. yeah, they did talk about it, didn't they? Construction. It's construction 71. 72. This should be us then. 74. Yeah. There we go, people. 74. I guess we should have backed it, eh? It's what a yurt looks like. And we've got a cover over top of us, which is awesome. That is awesome. Want to go check out your yurt? Do you want to know what else you can do? Realize that you're on camera and give us a really fake smile. Oh yeah. Let's do it. 
this is our campsite. We've got our fire pit. We got some possible bunny bunny marks, maybe a squirrel. Like how he says possible bunny marks and maybe a squirrel. So it might be <laughs> A rabbit and it might be a squirrel this is just like his food reviews where he never says this is the number one best burger i've ever had he always says like this is without a doubt one of the best burgers that i've ever but it's so it's like um this could be a rabbit it could be a squirrel we don't know one or the other this is what's on his main channel this would be boring for his vlog channel just look at it this is the kendomic main channel that could be a squirrel. So this is what a yurt looks like, ladies and gentlemen. I could be wrong. Maybe yurt is a native Canadian word for sissy white people pretending to camp. It is a permanent tent on a wooden platform. I don't remember seeing this in any of the other yurts that we looked at, so having that is great for snow or rain like as if the plastic apartment that is heated lit and has electric power for all the junk you want to bring wasn't good enough ken is pleased that now he doesn't have to worry about the rain or the snow either and at the exact moment he's saying that carol is checking out the gas barbecue which also comes with the rental of this thing uh, it doesn't look like it definitely keeps all the snow and rain off of here but uh, we're just hoping that it's not locked. Good. So they left it unlocked. And here we go. Lights are on. We've got our hydro box. So, given that you have electricity in this plastic apartment, there would be no reason for you to drag the jackery along. So I do not want to have that in any of the footage. Thanks, Ken. Please and thanks. No jackery, okay? Got it? Great. Got some spots here for stuff we've got a nice hanger there so you got a hanger that is fabulous Ken great thanks for including that in the footage we also have bunk beds and we've got two of them which is convenient because even though they're married Ken and Carol will be sleeping in separate beds got our electric stove I believe you said right mm -hmm. so they do have chairs they do have a table you're not allowed to cook in here and it looks like it can sleep two four five six people I'm not sure what the, uh, pull it down from the top. It says open window from the top. Open down. There's another one. Yeah. Oh, it's just for insulation purposes. Yeah. So that's oh, that's the screen. Thing. So outside, there's the thing you have to pull up. Right. If you want light to come in from outside, but they got a the nice chandelier. Our Ken is laughing at it as if to say it's garbage and he's roughing it. When bringing along your own candles or lantern or even a flashlight is part of what camping is all about. He is such an idiot. Happening up there. <laughs> so I guess we're going to start lugging our stuff in. Oh, here we go. Got our key. Design shelter. Our Ken is so desperate for content, yet so lazy to produce it at the same time, that he has resorted to just randomly reading labels. That is the company made the plastic apartment. Design shelter. Ooh. So he takes that footage back to the shack in the elf village. He keeps it in. He publishes it. And then at the tail end of every video he makes, he reminds you to please send him your money to support him in his work. Hmm. There we go. At least we'll have one open for a little bit. That's plastic there, so. Is it on? Hey. Hey, 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 hey. Is it on? Is it on? Is it on? Carol, is it on? Is is it on? Is it running? Is it on? Is it is it running? Is it on? Is it on? Is it? It's on, eh? Yeah. It is nice and warm in here already. It is, yeah. So thank you very much, Parks Canada, for making sure it was nice and warm. We don't have to come into a cold building. Oh look, we got a boot tray. Oh, that's, good. that's really nice. We don't want it to be all messy in here. So it's this one. There we go. Oh, so nice. much easier when you know how to do it, eh? Let's check out the condition of our barbecue. Ah, shucks! It's only a 2020 model. The Dominics are really roughing it. 
Not bad. There's a brush under here. Oh, good. Bye. Bye. <laughs> She's out of here. You're going to back it in, I would imagine. Good job. Do a donut. Good job, Carol. Nice. Yeah. Got the old set pad with all our cold food in there. It is already cold, you idiot. There is no need for it to be frozen solid. I mean, you're staying there for like uh, one or two days. You just got to get going with the product placement, huh? That's the, that's all your channel is there for. What the heck kind of a weird move was that? Our Ken is coming in with the camera too fast and Carol didn't know what to do. Hey, let's play that a few times and laugh at it. It's actually too warm in here. So there are plugs, and I think that's the only hydro in here. So we did bring batteries so we can put batteries in other spots. Oh, there's plugs here too. Fantastic. Storing food inside your yurt. There it is. The first Jackery product placement. And Ken just said that there are plugs everywhere. He's actually paid for the electricity that he's using. And he's got to carefully place the Jackery, put it in the shot, and then shoot it, take it to the Elf Village, and publish it. What a desperate loser. Unwanted animal visitors. So, just like camping, guys. Yep. So, so bring the food in for cooking, and then we'll put it back in the, the vehicle later. All right, we're going to unpack all this stuff. Whoa, what the heck was that? It was a twirl and a thumbs up, all in one motion. I guess... Ken thinks he's doing something cool. Let's uh, give him the benefit of the doubt and uh, let's uh, play it a few times. Pack all this stuff. 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 Mm, it is not cool. It is just weird. Then we'll make some food or something. Yeah. We should get a welcome one. Yes, we should. Like Great idea, Carol. Now, instead of the two of you just walking in there with that on the floor, you can now both slip on the rug and break your necks on the hardwood floor. Then again, how smart is Carol? She married Ken. Tweety Bird on her or something, I don't know. Yeah. Did you miss that? Ken says he wants a rug that's got Tweety Bird on it. That is what happens when you run the camera for much too long and create too much footage and you can't be bothered to edit it down later. What happens is that you end up sharing with people just how totally uncool you are. That was great. Thanks, Ken. Thanks. But, I don't know. So, uh, again, putting your boots over there, bringing slippers because the floor is definitely a little bit on the cold side. Or because you have room in your car, bring some little... Those are not carpets, Ken. They are called throw rugs. Oh my gosh. Uh, n never mind the throw rugs, Ken. What you need on your channel right now is another Jackery placement shot. Come on, do it! Do it! Carpets? That's always... Great job, Ken. You desperate hack. Once again, our Ken is making it too easy. In this shot, we have the electrical power box. And it's electricity that Ken is paid for, along with the rest of the yurt. And in the same shot, we have the redundant jackery. And it begs the question, if you're going to a yurt, why not just bring with you a $15 extension cord and don't bother buying a $200 jackery? And that's nothing against the jackery. It's just that... The poor Jackery people have an idiot promoting them. There's a bonus. I don't like cold feet. Did you hear Carol? She said, I don't like cold feet. And when Ken talks back, he says, no, nope, no cold feet. These two do not have grandchildren, yet they totally sound like grandparents. Our Ken is completely done with trying to be the wacky, zany guy getting the fast food and eating in his car and giving everything a go out and get it now. This is who they really are, and we we knew it for a long time. I mean, Ken is not a cool person. Carol's not cool either. 
And, uh, well, this, this is what it is. It's like, no, no cold feet. I have no, I have cold feet. No, no cold feet. Carol found her spot. She sure did. She's on a boring channel that sucks with an idiot pointing at her as if she was a bag of groceries. <laughs> she's got the kettle, she's got the Kleenex box, she's got the chair all set up right in front of the heat source. And uh, just to give you a heads up, they don't want you to touch any of the controls on the fireplace itself and do not put things on it to keep to, to dry and dry things. That was a no-no, but you can control it. It's got the temperature gauge here. So you can uh, make it hotter or colder or not as warm. Please learn how to talk, Ken. You make it hotter or colder or not as warm. That is called adjusting the temperature. <sighs> uh, but they don't want you to screw with this. Looking for site 33. Uh, apparently there's somebody there all the time that's selling wood. And I think it's seven bucks a bag. I'm gonna get two bags. Nice owl, cool. Park host on duty. Hello. How are you doing? You need some wood? Uh, yes, please. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thanks for being, being a park host. Hey, no problem. Thanks for appreciating it. Yeah. <laughs> well, somebody's got it here, right? Oh, yeah. What is this? Yeah. Is this the that's where you pay. Oh, okay. I, we don't handle money. Right. Uh, and it's what, four, uh, seven bucks per? Nine. Is it nine? Sorry. Yeah. So I guess we'll give them a tip of $2. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so, yeah, I can't give you change, so. Okay. Yeah, it kind of sucks that way. Anyway, yeah. At least it's here, right? Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. Have a good night. Thank you. Made it back. Great job, Ken. Perfect weather conditions, perfect roads, a two-year-old Volkswagen Tijuan in perfect shape, and you drove like uh, a few hundred yards to get some wood and you came back. He made it! He made it! He made it! He made it back! We are all set up now at 7 o'clock. Fire still going, and just to give you a heads up, that is a gas fireplace, not like an electric one, which some of the yurts do have, I believe. So it is gas, and the gas propane tank is just over there, which is probably running a lot of the, the yurt camping, and that's probably also running our um, barbecue. No, Ken. Magical forest fairy dust is running it. So that's kind of cool. Didn't notice that when we first came in. Carol pointed it out to me. Now we're going for a walk. So we got to put some of the refrigerator stuff away. Again, we have... Nobody cares what the percentage of power left on the Jackery is, Ken. You have electricity in the yurt. Take the stuff in and plug it in. Yeah, I mean, like, this is the kind of thing that, you know, folks would comment on his channel. And, you know, Ken is always saying, let me know what you think in the comment. And, like, he would just wipe that right off. Over here, we can say, like, you know, just plug this shit in. 78%. Uh, Again, it's the set power. And uh, as long as you keep that lid locked, it is using one watt. So it is actually not. Do you know what Ken's channel really needs? For the Jackery to get a voice, like a Muppet or something. And, you know, at least the Jackery doesn't get wildly drunk on tequila or have a pendulous gut. It could be like, hi, I'm the Jackery, doodly doodly do. I've got 78% uh, power, so I can do something around here. You know, I'm getting kind of hungry. Maybe you should plug me in, which is a little bit redundant, because why'd you bring me? <laughs> hey, can I eat a 9 volt battery? <laughs> can you put some mustard on it too, please? <laughs> that would be more entertaining than Ken Domic, really. Not using anything at the moment, so probably because it's really cold out here. Exactly, so there was no need to bring that big, stupid, portable refrigerator with you for this little camp thing. Can you make it too easy? Uh, so it's not needing to uh, kick on. We've got rice going for dinner, but uh, yeah, time to go for a walk.
the Domics are going for a walk. Fast forward, engaged. I think it was the easiest fire I think I've ever started without gasoline. You make it too easy, Ken. Thanks for admitting to us that most of the time you start your fires with gasoline. And gasoline has to be transported in the proper gasoline containers, which are meant to immediately be taken to the engines which need them. So that means that you're walking around there with a gas can, pouring shit around. You know, there could be embers of fire from somebody else, or somebody throws a cigarette, you fucking idiot. I mean, if you can't build a fire without extra help, I mean, then you use, like, a small can of lighter fluid so it doesn't blow up and hurt you and someone else. What an idiot. Okay, what's up? Okay, so for dinner, we're... They are going to make dinner, and it is going to be boring, so I'm just going to fast forward through it, and then we'll stop with the next Jack replacement shot. That is the thumbnail. Which sort of reminds me, because it's a uh, black background with the hands. It's sort of like the black light theater of the famous people players. Only there's nothing fun happening because Ken is in the background and not some artist doing a performance. And, uh, like, he, he totally sets these shots up. His content is such garbage. And it's like, whoa, the, the Jackery just happened to be there. Yeah, while you're uh, cracking some eggs. Uh, so that's the thumbnail, and let's keep pushing past it. How many? Two, three? Probably them, three of them. Okay. At one point, then you read four? Yeah, but we're not cooking the whole rest. pepper and pretty much anything so I have to add a little bit of pepper. The content that Ken produces is so so bad. The purpose of this next shot is to get Muskoka bearware onto the channel and so Ken is gonna make a big to-do about oh there's steam coming off the rice oh check out all this steam. The purpose is just to shoot the Muskoka bearware and that's that, that's why why he's making it. I mean, it's not entertainment. It's another product placement. Mix it in. So I don't get pepper. Oh my gosh! See the steam? The steaming, crazy. Oh yeah, I can see the steam. Great job, Ken. Muskoka bearware. Muskoka bearware. Muskoka bearware. Muskoka bearware. Now they're gonna make s'mores. It's boring. Nobody cares. I'm gonna fast forward through it, and then we're gonna get to their uh, fish dinner in the next episode. Holy cow, is this boring. 
Ken is about to make a cup of instant coffee, and I'm going to show you all the footage just as an example of how bad his content is with this retirement channel thing. So it, it, it's going to be dull. It won't last too long. Let's do it. Well, they can't really get wet because uh, they're, they're inevitably packed. <laughs> Dropped into the bucket. Good morning. Good morning. How'd you sleep? 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 Pretty good. Want to know why? Even though they're married, they sleep in separate beds. Can you make it too easy? Yeah. Yeah. The you. beds are comfy. It's just weird all the noises because it's a soft sided yeah. structure and then the I'm not familiar with the noises that the fireplace makes. When it too. kicks on and shuts yeah. off. It's not it's not like in your face it's just like it's just a different noise you had to get used to, right? Yeah. It's not like it's loud or anything, it just makes a noise yeah. when it switches on and off. That was some great banter, Ken. Very entertaining. Great channel. <laughs> How about you? How'd you sleep? Uh, my, <laughs> I kind of shouldn't have brought this sleeping bag. This is like my minus nine sleeping bag. And I did sleep in my clothes just because I just have this fear of being cold. So Even though he has a gas stove and a sleeping bag, Ken slept in his clothes because he has a fear of the cold. This really is the Senior Living Channel with your host, Kenneth Domick, who makes it too easy! Uh, I slept perfectly fine. Like, the temperature was just dynamite in the sleeping bag. Uh, in the air, it was perfectly fine all night. Oh, and she, oh, Carol also gave me a, uh, a hot, hot, water bottle. hot water bottle. We have referred from time to time to Ken as a man-child, and now... He has let it be known that he sleeps with a hot water bottle. And look at how proud his wife is that he does it. And I guess he's got to sleep with a hot water bottle because he doesn't sleep with his own wife. <laughs> Ken, you make it too easy. I don't know what to say. Y y like, you know what's coming up next? Carol makes a fart noise with the hot water bottle. I kid you not. You can go to Ken's channel and you can check it for yourself. And uh, the hot water bottle definitely started me off being super toasty warm last night. Is it still warm? It's still a little bit warm. That's amazing. That's because that's like 12 hours now at least. And it wasn't even boiling water. We just had water sitting by the fire. Yeah. We put that whole pot on the fireplace <clears throat> and... There it is. Did you hear it? I'll play it a few more times. I'm not faking this. Like, the cringe is, 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 is it's, it's being served, already f f fully cooked to perfection. Place, and place, and place, and place, and place, and, uh... What you Really? Yeah, it says don't put anything on top of fireplace. Uh, this morning, uh, the first thing that woke me up this morning, probably around 7, was the hundreds, at least... That's what it sounded like. Hundreds of Canadian geese having a chatty Cathy conference. Our Ken is in the woods, sort of camping with this yurt thing, and he is complaining about having been awakened by Canada geese. 
So glad that we have this community in this channel because Ken is immediately getting into this senior citizen role. The jokes are writing themselves. And to see who can honk the loudest. Definitely the shoes uh, are a must uh, for winter camping because I did uh, walk around for a bit without the slippers on and the floor is cold. Over there it's nice, over there it's really cold. So bring slippers. Now you need to change your slogan from bring your hunger to bring slippers. Anyway, so today we are probably going to go for another walk and then... And then who cares? Really, I would not have expected that Ken would bring this level of boredom into his food channel. And, uh, well, the thing is, I, I am making this on April 7th, 2022. I might get it ready to be published tomorrow, April 8th, 2022. As of today, April 7th, he has changed his banner from this, the uh, wacky food guy, to this. Let's get a closer look at it. This was done with Illustrator, and the trees are pretty dark, which is not too bad. There are some light trees, not too much. The thing is, the lake is quite dark and small, so it is difficult to notice. The Sprinter van has been posterized, and it is at a funny angle, taking up the entirety of the road. <laughs> and uh, Ken has got a Canadian flag on it, like Canadian... Everything with Ken. He's the Canadian knucklehead, the Canadian everyman. Funny that he buys, you know, a Mercedes Benz and he buys a Volkswagen, both of which are German. Which I got nothing against. It's just that Ken is the one who's pretending to be so Canadian, right? He's the patriotic Canadian and when the moment arrives to buy things, he, he buys German Volkswagen and Mercedes Benz. And, um, KBD Productions TV, under that, uh... The red banner is clip art, which shows a lack of creativity. Rusty, which of course he bought used, uh, and that's a, uh, an American Canadian product for the most part. Uh, it has the Canadian flag is pointing down a little bit, and it needs to be pointing up a little bit so it's in line with the bottom of the grill, and it should be in the center, which it is not. The jet plane is flying a little low. <laughs> uh, it is depicted as flying lower than some of the buildings, which are also depicted as being shorter than the CN Tower. And as for the CN Tower, our Ken continues to identify with Toronto, and he's not from there. Originally, he was from the Scarborough area, I believe. He was never from Toronto proper. And for the entirety of his YouTube career, he, like with the Ken Domic Nation stuff, what was it, the Domic Nation, he identifies with the CN Tower, which is a boring symbol to adopt because it's not the world's tallest free-stranding structure anymore. It's been, you know, beaten by other things. And, um, well, it's still a, a cool thing. The thing is, Ken is not based in Toronto, and the idea that he's based in a big city, and that he's running around to all of these cosmopolitan restaurants trying all these exotic foods is ridiculous, because he's in the shack in the off village, he chose to live there because he wanted to live on the cheap, and to raise his kids in the shack in the off village, so now he can cash in uh, with no mortgage, and to sell his, his property, which is worth a lot of money, and uh, Ken is just in a ditch of fast food uh, running around the Elf Village and the surrounding communities. The biggest place he gets to is when he comes here to Barry, and then immediately goes back to the Elf Village. So uh, that is something he's carrying on with to make it seem like he's a big city person when he is not. He, he couldn't afford to live there. He wouldn't be able to work enough to stay there. He couldn't take the pace. He couldn't compete with the uh, people who are real professionals there either. And it's, uh, it's pretty dull. And the most important thing is that even though it says food and travel, this is the, the wait, here's the second most important thing. It says food and travel adventures, and there's no food here. The most important thing is Ken 
and his brand of the cartoon version of himself has been completely removed from here and he's been replaced by a couple of vehicles and a plane in the CN Tower. Um, so we have therefore witnessed the demise of the Kendomic Food Channel character and the content that goes with it. Um, the zany guy who's looking for fast food and giving everything a go out and get it now, uh, this character here appears to be dead and gone. Because I don't know how he can come back after poisoning his food channel and the audience that he does have that's expecting more and more fast food and it's all like a senior citizen lifestyle channel now. And again, I am not ripping on people who are older than myself. Because, you know, like, there's people older than us, there's people younger than us. It's just that not all senior citizens or retired people are boring like Ken. I'm making fun of his boring material that he publishes, not senior citizens. So, um... That is it for his uh, zany character. We have got here. The, the, the channel is is gone and turned into this boring retiree channel with an, uh, um, with an equally boring banner to go with it. So we pick up where we left off and Ken is going to speak to his wife and include her in some Jackery product placement. Uh, instead of cooking tonight, we're going to treat ourselves to a mom-and-pop shop that we heard that's really close to this campsite. And what does it call it? It's a fish and chip place. Lord Elgin's. Lord Elgin's. Let us know in the comments below if you've ever, ever been to Lord Elgin's fish and chip shop. And uh, so we're going to go there for dinner. And hopefully by tonight, uh, or at least this late afternoon, there's no more rain. And we can start another fire. And then we're going to do... Uh, Carol had two ideas. The first idea is get me out of this jackery product placement shot and the second one is if you're not going to do that turn off the camera you idiot. It is Carol who is loaded. She wants to tour and she wants to tour right now. So Ken has no choice. You know as long as they're married he has to drop the stupid food channel and they are going to tour. And that is why the content has changed so dramatically. And he's just chronicling now his boring self and her boring self while they just tour in an ugly van and go get fish and chips. This one's called the Hobo Pies, um, which you make with bread and jam, and then it's like in a press, and then you put the press inside the uh, campfire, and that heats it up and makes it all... Oh, you, I guess you, you butter it all first, right? Right, yeah. You, yeah. you butter the bread. So it's like a grilled cheese yeah. almost. Yeah, so there's like, it's like a, it's cast iron pie, yeah. pie things, but yeah. it's square, so it would be good for the loaf of bread that we bought right. yesterday. So yeah, you butter the bread so it doesn't burn, and it's like a grilled, yeah. grilled sandwich kind of thing, and you put jam in there. You can even put cheese in there, make like a mini pizza. But we, we, did, we did buy bananas. We did buy bananas. And we don't right? we don't really want them to go bad, so the poor door. Um seventy seven percent, so Oh, nice. No, no, don't do that one. Don't do that one. It'll make the deck all messy. Oh. Do the one by the fireplace. Ken Dunlick thought he was going to become a big shot. He never did it. And now, this is what he has left.
Well, Ken, that was amazing. Oh. Whoa! Remember that this is on his main food channel. Oh. Whoops. Cracking eggs in the dark. Let's just push this forward. Check it out, all the ice melted. Good walk, eh? It's time to eat some fish and chips, don't you think? Sure. There it is. Lord Elgin fish and chips. I'm, I'm hoping that we beat the rush, the dinner rush, because it's only 4.30. Now, I had removed the Senior Living Channel graphic when I was talking about the new Ken Channel banner. And uh, I haven't brought it back yet because I knew that this was coming. Ken and Carol are about to get dinner at 4.30 p.m. Yeah, now we bring it back. This truly is the Senior Living Channel with your host, Kenneth Domic. Getting dinner at 4.30 p.m. You're 4.40 and it is raining cats and dogs. What do you think? Should they be able to find a seat? This is what it is to be retired. Carol is just recently retired this year, and Ken has been retired for more than a decade. <laughs> and especially so after 2016 when he gave up after CraveCon failed, and he didn't want to put in the work to try to keep it going because he's such a pissy little bitch. And you can go get dinner at 4.30 because everybody else is working. Welcome to Lord Elgin Fish and Chips. What you gonna get? What you gonna get? I'm going to get the hell of it. Yeah, that is the best. You can tell by the price. <laughs> Ken is at a fish and chip place and he's sweating $19.75 for halibut at a fish and chip place what is his problem like is he two years old furthermore he can afford it and he just bought a forty thousand dollar sprinter van with carol which they are going to throw away in a couple of months uh, like well, what, what's the story i mean uh, they're not going to the food bank and he's still saying on his patreon that he's barely getting by he's lying 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 with his patreon saying he's barely getting by He's sweating the price? Get out of here. <laughs> we'll take that one little seed off. Salt that up too. Okay, so you want me to film you or not? Yeah, in a second. You're busy. Mmm. Mm. No, good taste in fries. So, little shards of potato, deep fried, and heavily salted taste good. Thanks yet again, Ken, for letting us know that French fries are tasty. Uh, even though you're retired along with Carol and you're not at McDonald's 
it's pretty much the same thing, right? So thanks for for keeping that going. It it, it is appreciated, very much so. Mm -hmm. Not bad with the vinegar, the malt vinegar and the salt. Carol's going in. She already had a, a nibble. Mm -hmm. Again, this is a there's only so many types of fish Carol likes and halibut, crappy, uh, perch, and walleye. I think are your the, all the ones that you like now. So mm, it's good. But then they have these buns from a bakery that's apparently really famous around here. Yeah. And just pouring rain outside. So we're not going to be doing a fire tonight whatsoever. Mm. Good bun. Very good bun. Our Ken is having a bun. Good bun? Very good bun. That is the dialogue we have left on his channel. It's a good bun. No, 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 wait. And then it's, just, it's, it's not just a good bun, it's a very good bun. It's like, the, that's quite the bun. You know, like, that. that's, that's a, a, a bun... Among buns that is standing out from the pack of buns, which are not as good as that bun. Good bun? Oh, no. Very good bun. Very good bun. Very, very good bun. Very good bun, people. Look how flaky and thick the piece of halibut that you get. Very nice indeed. I love the crunchy breading. He looks angry as hell! What the heck is the matter with Ken? That could have been the thumbnail. I just thought I already committed myself to the Jackery earlier and the... You know, I, he, he's got his, the money through Carol. And, you know, whenever he wants to sell that property that the shack is on at the Elf Village, that's another mint. I guess he's just angry that he never became a big shot. There's rage there. A can of pop. Usually it's a dollar, but here it's two. I'm not going to do it. I could take that footage and move it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and close crop it, and then I could play this sound clip from this very video that Ken made here. Mm, that'll be so hot. Mm, that'll be so hot. Mm. Not going to do it. We've had more than enough fun with this already. Ken, get over here. Now we're gonna f do this clean. Finish the show, monkey boy. Phenomenal. British penis. <laughs> double, a double. That sucked like shit. That sucked huge fucking shit. White Canadian. The Japanese are horrible people. White Canadian. The Japanese are horrible people. White Canadian. The Japanese are horrible people. Tangy.